Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to virtual worship at Bethlehem United Church of Christ this morning. We are so glad to have you with us. And I want to extend a special welcome to our sister church over in German Township. Welcome to St. Paul's German Township uh, as they are joining us for virtual worship today while my parents are taking some time off. So thank you uh, to the congregation at German Township for giving them that opportunity to take some time away. And we offer you some digital hospitality this morning. We're so glad you've joined us. join me now for our call to worship. When our strength is depleted, God provides. When all seems lost, God provides. When we are hungry, God provides. Bread of heaven, feed us till we want no more. Please join me in today's scripture reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 through 15. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. 
in that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening, and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of the Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. May God help us to learn from this reading. the Oxford English Dictionary added the word hangry, which means bad-tempered or irritable as a result of hunger. 
Do you ever get hangry? I definitely get that way. My parents used to use me as a barometer for mealtimes. When I started getting cranky, they knew it was time to start working on lunch. It may not be something we think about much, but the truth is that human beings are pretty fragile creatures. We need to eat, drink, and sleep regularly to survive and thrive. When humans don't have food, water, or the sleep we need, it doesn't take long before we become unfocused, inefficient, and unreasonable. The Snickers candy bar advertising campaign, You're Not You When You're Hungry, makes this point well. Snickers has done several of these ads over the past decade. My favorite one is the one with the Brady Bunch. In these commercials, there's a belligerent character who physically transforms once they've taken a bite of the candy bar, assuaging their hunger and their hanger to return them to their normal, more reasonable state. In our scripture passage for today, it is the Israelites who are hungry, and their hunger is causing them to be disgruntled with their leadership. Whatever courage and faithfulness they may have had back when they sang and danced on the shore of the Red Sea has given way to despair just about six weeks after leaving slavery in Egypt. Along with their hanger towards Moses and Aaron comes a selective memory. Egypt may have been a place of horrible suffering, but at least they had food to eat. If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger, they accuse. Their complaint is clear. Egypt had meat and bread, which is more than can be said for the wilderness. What good is their freedom if they are going to die from hunger? It would have been better if Moses and Aaron had just let them be back in Egypt. The reality of Israel's liberation brings to mind the old adage, the grass is always greener on the other side, or be careful what you wish for. Just months prior, they surely longed to be out from under the oppressive weight of Egypt's abuse. We can imagine they expected the bulk of their troubles would be left behind in Egypt as they triumphantly followed the God of their fathers off into the wilderness. But we are reading here that there were unanticipated struggles ahead of them, ones they could not have imagined as they longed for the freedom they now enjoy. They are hungry. The Israelites' angry response toward their leaders brings to mind another adage, what have you done for me lately? Moses reframes their complaint to make clear that they are not simply complaining against him and his brother, but in actuality, they are complaining against God. But God takes their protests in stride, responding to their cries. You'll remember that this whole story began with God hearing their cries as they were enslaved in Egypt and coming down to see about their situation. Once again now, God hears their cries and God responds. God will provide meat in the evenings in the form of quail and bread in the mornings in the form of manna. God's provision is meant to be a reminder of God's enduring care into this next chapter for them. In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord. But God's provision is also a test for them. Can they live in this paradoxical space of being free people, but also being fully dependent on God? Can they trust that God will do what God says? Can they relax and allow God to meet their needs without allowing their anxiety to drive them to hoard God's provision? God provides manna for them, but just enough for that day. We didn't read the whole story this morning, though I encourage you to go back and continue reading through the rest of chapter 16. 
you'll find that God instructs them to only collect enough each morning for their household for that day and not to save any. On the sixth day, they are to collect double what they normally do as it will have to last them through the Sabbath when no manna will be provided. God will rest on the seventh day as the Israelites are instructed to do. Some do not pass God's test, trying to gather more than is needed and save, that, save it until the following day. Some go out on the seventh day looking for additional manna, despite God providing enough for the Sabbath the day before. Learning to live day by day and accept that the provision received today will be received again tomorrow is challenging for the formerly enslaved Israelites. But they must learn that their new chosen master is wholly different from Pharaoh. With God, there is enough today and there will be enough tomorrow. There is no need for stockpiling. Our passage today offers a pastoral word for any time we find ourselves in a challenging season. When God's people cry out, God responds. When God's people are anxious, God responds. When God's people have need, God responds. And God responds with enough. God may not respond with exactly what we want, God may not respond exactly how we would do things if the game plan were in our hands, but God will give us enough. The Lord's Prayer works to, di to discipline our hearts and minds to remember this. Give us this day our daily bread, even though we possibly like to ask for much more. If I were honest in my prayers, I would like to pray, God, show me every detail of the next 30 years and how you want me to respond in each situation that arises. But God does not offer that scope because God needs us to trust enough for today. And that's the lesson and the gift of the manna. When we are tempted to look ahead at what is to come, when we are tempted to concern ourselves about what will happen this fall or this winter or next spring, when we are tempted to worry about someday down the road when it's time to apply for college or look for a job or find a spouse or start a family or retire, the manna in the wilderness stops us in our tracks and reminds us that God has promised enough. Enough for today. Dare we consider that maybe God tests us as God did the Israelites? Can we handle trusting God for that kind of day-to-day -day provision when we live in a long-range planning kind of world? We have certainly had ample opportunity to observe the collision between God's manna life and our desire for long-range planning life over these last six months, haven't we? The pastoral word we get from this scripture is that like a parent responds when he hears his child cry, God mobilizes when God's people have a need. A child can eat breakfast without worrying about what will come at lunchtime because they trust parents will provide a meal for them then, too. This is what God wants for God's people. That kind of confidence that their needs will be met over and over and over again. Of course, we know that not all children can have that kind of confidence when they sit down to eat breakfast. We know that not all families have the food they need for health and wholeness. And that's where we discover the second lesson from our text for today. In addition to a pastoral word, this passage has a word about justice for us too. God fed the Israelites with manna in the wilderness for 40 years. God was teaching the people to trust his provision, yes. 
But God was also teaching them about his intention for the community. God creates a system of feeding the people that is sufficient and just. There is enough for everyone. There is no need for competition. In fact, God's system works to break the people of the impulse to compete for and hoard resources. God takes people who lived under Pharaoh's politics of exclusion and scarcity and shows them that when God is at the helm, everyone has what they need. But the manna teaches not just that no one has less than what they need, but also that no one has more than what they need. They can't take more than they need. It won't last for the next day. Everyone simply has enough. And by each simply having enough, there is also enough for everyone else. God is modeling for them in these 40 years God's desire for life together in community. God knows there will come a day when they reach the promised land, when they will organize their own society. One day they will have their own king and their own economy, and they will have to decide if they can trust God's politics or if they will again fall into the politics of Pharaoh. Israel will have to confront the question of whether the politics of Pharaoh are only unjust when you find yourselves on the bottom, or if they are also unjust when you are on the top. Conversely, is God's way only worthwhile when you are at the bottom, or is it also worthwhile when you have the opportunity to take more than you need if you wanted to? Will Israel create and sustain a nation that lives into the model that God gave for them in the wilderness, where access to the basic necessities of life belongs to everyone? Or, when Israel is no longer the underdog, will they take it as an opportunity to exploit others as they were once exploited? These questions continue to be relevant for us today. The word of justice in our passage continues to challenge us today when we live in a world of such dramatic resource disparity. In a world where there is enough food, but 820 million people go hungry each day. The good news of this passage is that we can trust that God is and will continue to meet us in whatever season we are in. God will provide what we need. The challenge is that God is also modeling for us God's priorities and charging us to think critically about the world around us. Are we taking only what we need? These dual words for today challenge us to look for God's provision in our lives during moments of uncertainty and fear, while also challenging us to allow God's sufficient provisions to be enough when we have the power and influence to take more than we truly need. May our prayer give us this day our daily bread, discipline our hearts to trust God more fully in both difficult and prosperous seasons. Please pray with me. Dear God, who supplies our every need, we come to you again offering prayers of thanksgiving for your faithfulness. Thank you for meeting us with reminders in the morning and reminders at night of your love and provision. Give us eyes to see where you are at work, even when we might feel alone or afraid. Even as we thank you for ways you provide for us, we confess that we are tempted to take more than we need and more than we are entitled to. Help us reflect on our lives and what it means to have enough for today, trusting that there will be enough tomorrow too. 
Help the faith in our hearts translate to our feet on the ground. We pray for those who are struggling today. We remember the sick, the displaced, the grieving. We pray for those who have been affected by the wildfires and the hurricanes. We pray for those who are unemployed and underemployed. We offer also the prayers of our hearts that we cannot bring ourselves to verbalize, trusting that you hear them all the same. And now we unite our hearts and our voices to pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. 